of those, the show that explores the art of sneaker culture. I'm your host, Adam Butler, back with another episode. Thank you so very kindly for being here. We've got a dope show lined up for you guys today. We're going to jump right into it. Today, we're talking about sneaker creators, right? Sneaker customization, even though I don't even want to call this guy a customizer because he does so much more than that. He's a sneaker reconstructor. And he goes by the name of Johnny's Kicks. He's here to join us today. This dude is so dope, man. He's done some big projects with some big time folks. He's going to talk about it all. We're going to talk about sneaker customization. We're going to talk about NFTs. We're going to talk about it all, man. What up, man? Matter of fact, without further ado, let's jump right into it. Johnny's Kicks. John, welcome to the show, man. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. You know, I, the show is all about the art of sneaker culture and such. And one of the biggest pieces of sneaker culture that's pure art, honestly, is customization, right? Creating your own thing. Talk to me about how just let's just take me to the beginning, man. How'd you get into it? What was your first shoe you customized? Just tell the people about it. Uh, Yeah, well, I guess it goes back to just like my collecting and like love of sneakers, really. You know, I've been collecting them for like 20 years. Um, 30, I'm in my mid thirties now. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, it really just started with, um, just self-expression really, you know, it's like seeing the same people wearing the same shoes every single day. And then, you know, you see maybe a special colorway from a, a shoe and you, you know, you can't afford it or like, you know, reselling is crazy and it's just impossible to get. So, you know, you kind of just do your own thing, whether that's with markers or, you know, paint, you know, I started doing my own customs, like, obviously in like elementary school and middle school, but it, it was just like for myself. Right. right. I, I uh, never really did it for anybody. Um, then Instagram kind of came around and then like, that was huge for everybody to be able to post like on feet shots and sneakers. And like, I kind of just fell into the sneaker niche. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, as you kind of see it with Instagram, it's some more of like, that's the shoe that's going to release. And then everyone gets it. And then everybody's posting their own versions of like their on feet or like their enhanced or box or whatever it might be. And then I just basically was like, uh, let me just take this shoe and change the color. Just just a simple color blocking in Photoshop. I was a design graphic design student in college and I always worked with like Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and all these other things. So I was like, let me just take this photo and, and just change it to a simple concept. And people really thought it was like a sample, like a concept. They, they had no idea what it was because the way I kind of design is you don't know if it's a real or a concept. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, most people when they design concepts, it's like very like digital render version so you're like yeah okay that's clearly a concept but for me i was taking like cl- like the cleanest off feet shots from like the best photographers and like the right. best sneaker collectors and then taking their off feet shots of shoes i couldn't even get and then like turning them into like concepts and i was just doing that for years and then um i guess fast forward until it's like 2018 i had the ability to go and work for the shoe surgeon mm-hmm. and kind of got to learn like the entire back end from like quote unquote the goat of like this whole industry and like the, the godfather really yeah of like because we really open doors for every single person, like uh, directly or indirectly, whether it was yeah. from a school or, you know, from just the exposure. And so yeah. seeing that firsthand, seeing like the entire process, um, it gave me a lot of belief in myself that I could do it. And then I pretty much took all the relationships I forged with everyone within the industry from every sh- painter, every instruction artist. And I basically said, instead of just me designing these concepts and just living as digital renders, like mm-hmm. let's just start, handing them to customizers and just having them create them in real life. And then we'll just release them as limited runs to people for them to have the ability to be able to cop them. Yeah. Right. So it was like, for me, like every shoe I released, it's a shoe that I wish I had in my collection. Mm -hmm. And so I just designed based off of like my sheer love of sneakers and like what next sneaker do I want in my collection? And instead of looking at retail calendars and like retail shoes, I pretty much say, all right, what base do I want to use? And then I'm going to reconstruct it or have it painted or have it done in any material that I want handmade by like the best makers in the world. And then, you know, allowing people to actually be able to get into it and not have it just be like a one of one for myself, but allow like 10, 15 people to be able to cop it if they want as well. So do you find that people, you know, and that's just so much I want to ask about this. So do you find that people really enjoy having a sneaker that's super unique to them, even if it's only 15 of them out there, or in some cases, just two, right? You may have one and another person, your, your customer may have one. Do you find that people feel a little special when they have like a sneaker that's unique to them? For sure. For sure. I mean, you can almost see it in, um, 
take our, 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 our just specific niche, right? When we go to sneaker con, right? Mm-hmm. Like most people that go to these sneaker con events or go just sneaker events in general, right? You, you buy these sneakers because you're buying them and paying a thousand or $2,000 resale because it's a limited shoe, right? Mm-hmm. And it's like, how many people are actually buying that shoe because they actually like it or because popular culture has told them that it's like, that shoe is resellable, that's expensive. And then people are going to be impressed by you wearing it, right? I think when you go to a sneaker con event and you get seen wearing a one of one that's made with the same silhouette, whether it's a Jordan one, no matter what, people are going to look at it and they're going to give you a different reaction Mm -hmm. than if it's just like a standard union or a standard Travis Scott. Um, Because, I mean, almost when you go there, I mean, what was funny, the last sneaker con I went to was like half the entire venue was wearing union Jordan fours or Travis Scott's. Right. Right. And so everyone thought that they were wearing something limited, but when they went, everyone was wearing the same shoes. Right. And I was wearing like, let's say, for instance, like I was wearing these. Yeah. Yeah. And no, I was fresh right there. That's good. Yeah. Right. So yeah. It describe, was just, describe yeah. that one for the podcast and just for the people that's going to be listening. Okay. So this was a shoe that I ended up having developed with my buddy Raymar mm-hmm. uh, footwear, who is a customizer located in San Diego, as well as El Paso. He runs a mm-hmm. school. Um, but he was the one who I partnered up with to make this shoe. Yeah. And um, the reason why I made the shoe is I rendered it. And then Jay Balvin himself reached out to me and said, I don't care what you have to do, but you have to make that shoe for me. Wow. And so what I did is I hit a break. Mm-hmm. He was more than willing to help me tool it, figure it out, figure mm-hmm. out the gradients, figure out the materials, figure out everything. We did about 48 samples of this shoe yeah. before we got it right. And um, we ended up gifting Jay his personal pair. I love but it. that was one of those shoes. I believed in my personal opinion right. that the Balvin one was the shoe of the year that yeah. year. And so it was just my personal favorite. And I just right. go off of what I think is my best. And so, and plus being a fan of his music, what he's done for culture, just everything. And then now becoming friends with him and really being able to work on a lot of projects together. Yeah. That just shoe means like quite a bit to me. I imagine that's a cool part of it, right? Uh, you know, we all watch like Entourage and shows like that where like, you know, you see Vinny Chase and Turtle trying to chase down a specific sneaker and, you know, the customizer yeah. and the guy that's known for being able to hook up the sneaker for the, the celeb. You know what I mean? I know you don't just do it just to hang out with celebrities. I know that's not mm-hmm. the case, but, you know, how many cool people have you met just being in this world and being that guy? It's I mean, it's so crazy because it's happened so fast, right? I think. And I say that, like, not saying it, like, I designed shoes for six and a half years during yeah. Instagram, posting every day, and nothing right. came from it. I was just doing it for free. Yeah. And then I really took it upon myself at the very beginning of COVID mm-hmm. to pretty much say, like, yo, let's start making all these shoes. Mm-hmm. And so it's really been, like, a quick rise to the fact that, like, I've done 50, I think, 55 pairs of shoes in the mm-hmm. last year and a half, right? So it's just consistently banging them out. But, yeah, the people that I've been able to meet along the road. Yeah. I think more than anything, the people in this industry, like the music industry, especially um, athletes, Mm -hmm. they not only have the bank to do it, but then they really love and thrive off of standing out and having one of ones or having very limited things. It's like almost going into the studio and like they immediately are looking at what shoes they're wearing instead of like, you know, dabbing them up first. It literally is one of those things. It's almost like a competition where it's like, oh, oh, okay, I see you. I see what you're wearing today. Right. And so for me, I just get to be the beneficiary of it and like let pretty much creating whatever their thought process was or then creating a thought process and just straight DMing them. I'm saying, this is what I thought or had in mind for you when I was designing this shoe. Are you down for me to like bring it to life for you? Right. And then, you know, sometimes they don't answer. Sometimes they do. Mm-hmm. Um, but for me, it's like, I just love creating art and then, you know, connecting with cool people. Yeah. Let's talk about the growth, just just in sneaker culture, right? Because at one point, sneakers were just, you know, functional. You know what I mean? You wore them for style. Yeah. And then you started to wear them for style. Nowadays, I believe, and tell me what you think about it, because you, you mentioned art. And I've always described sneakers as wearable art, right? That's where we are now. And do you think that's going to continue to grow? And why do you think people start are starting to see sneakers as wearable art? I mean, what's so cool about it is I don't even think it's going to be wearable art. I think it's truly going to be just art in general, right? Because like a lot of my friends, even like a, a good friend of mine, Color Me Fresh, right? He's doing all these crazy ass anime uh, uh, painted shoes, right? Mm-hmm. They're not necessarily meant to be worn. They're almost just meant to be art pieces. Okay. And so what I love about it is like even half my clients is really a half and half mix. Half of them wear my shoes. 
right. then the other half really do put them in glass cases and have them displayed as art pieces in their office mm-hmm. uh, and wherever it might be. So yes, it's definitely going to continue to grow. I believe, I think we're just in like this new cusp of like a Renaissance era, like a new Renaissance era with art and digital art, and physical yeah. art and collecting limited, limited product. Yeah. Um, you know, it's more meaningful. And that yeah. it's, I mean, talking about progression, four or five years ago, it was really only a couple of guys you could go to to get really good quality work. Yeah. Right. Now with competition is driving greatness where there's so many more people that are hungry. I think COVID really opened people's eyes to like really trying to chase their own dreams. Because mm-hmm. um, they've had the, my time to finally think about like, what do I really want from life? And I have to go chase right. it. Right. And so like I'm seeing so many more customizers and so many more creators entering the space. And as they continue to progress day in and day out, uh, a lot of cool, amazing product is going to be made from that. And I think, yeah, people are definitely appreciating like limited quality products. Yeah. I love that. Again, it's just, it's an art piece and I, and, and you're right. I am starting to notice people just like, Hey, this is just going to go in the case, right? Whether it's a customized, a custom, you know, something that was custom made or something that they just really wanted and they got their hands on, you know, uh, you know, it could be anything, right? The, a grail that they've had for years, something, you know, sometimes people buy sneakers and, I, and I'm saying all of this because, you know, this audience that I have, some of them are diehard dedicated sneakerheads. A lot of people are just people that are just interested in sneaker culture and are learning sure. as they yeah. go. Right. And, you know, sometimes yeah. when I explain to people like, oh, there's people that buy sneakers, they'll buy an 85, like a Jordan one from 85. That's you couldn't even put on your foot. The moment you put on your foot, it falls apart, but they want it. And they spent $30,000 for it. And they want it because they want it in that case, you know? I mean, that, that is art in my opinion, right? I mean, in 85 Jordan one, you don't need to wear that. You're buying that specifically for the memory, for the nostalgia, for what it truly means to you. And it's like, for me, I wish I could get a hand on one of those. Again, Mm -hmm. I would just treat it as an art collector because first and foremost, I collect art in general, like Mm -hmm. shoes is one of them, but you know, obviously what you see behind me, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I just appreciate art in just general. And so those, it's just a different meaning, right? If you can get that one or two, it's just, yeah, for sure. For me, it's like that. Yeah. I, I mean, that's 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 what I love about, you know, sneaker culture, streetwear culture, hip hop culture, just in general is just that it's, it's art at the end of the day. And art progresses and art, you know, uh, travels through all mediums. Right. So now we have the metaverse. And again, my audience is a lot of people that like the metaverse and people are buying digital sneakers and this, that and another. Um, you notice Nike has gotten into the space. Adidas has gotten into the space, you know, um, Talk to me about NFTs, the metaverse, just, you know, I know you've been starting to, you started to get into that a bit. Just talk to me about your journey with uh, the metaverse. For sure. Um, Yeah. I mean, the whole technology behind um, NFTs in general, I think it's the, it's the blockchain and having for the first time in human history, Mm -hmm. true proof of not only ownership um, and uh, for, for the collector, but for the artist itself. Mm -hmm. That's the biggest takeaway that I take from it. It's like it's true ownership for both, and it's proven within a blockchain. Um, so for me, yeah, it's as a, as I mean, you see these bigger brands getting into it, they're going to basically be able to link every one of their tangible products to a digital aspect and actually prove authenticity and prove um, ownership in that exact collection, mm-hmm. right? So for me, it, and then I don't know, it's it's really exciting because it's a whole nother shift in way to think about business yeah and in art in general um yeah yeah, it's 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 yeah it's pretty remarkable actually it's it's really remarkable when you think about it from a uh something as tangible as a a sneaker you know what i mean Mm -hmm. or or land right i think that's where people get and I'm still learning about it, trust me, but it, it intrigues we me. We all are always. Oh, yeah, it's so new, you know, but it, it intrigues me because when I think about a sneaker, I think about something that I'm going to put on way outside and, you know, try to stunt with, right? <laughs> try mm-hmm. to try to really show out, you know, um, but like we mentioned earlier, as uh, as we expand our minds about what sneakers can be, what art can be, you know, now it makes sense. But you mentioned something before about that true ownership, right? And you as a mm-hmm. creative, you as a person that creates product, I, I imagine if someone just copies what you do, it's pretty obvious and pretty easy to take care of. Well, I mean, I'll take a perfect example, right? The no, Board no. Club. Yeah. yeah. I'll take a perfect example because it's the most well-known, right? Mm-hmm. People are like, yo, I can screenshot that. But can you sell that screenshot for a hundred or $300,000? Right. 
Right. No, you can't. The guy who owns that one version of that one ape is proven right. on the blockchain that that guy owns that one ape, right? Yeah. And so imagine when you start talking about that for every physical product mm -hmm. linked with your tangible, like your, your digital aspect, mm -hmm. where it's like you can literally hold your tangible shoe in front of your phone mm -hmm. and then it links to that exact blockchain where it will basically cut out like the stock X's or like the, the, the eBay authentications because it's like they can basically release, let's say, 100,000 units and they have an right. actual... Um, private key embedded yeah. in that shoe that you just hold up in front of a digital aspect and right. then it'll open up that page and it's the exact authentication for what factory it was when it was made what mm -hmm. uh, what version if it's one out of 100,000 or if it's one out of whatever right. um, so and plus what Nike did was very smart is they partnered up with Artifact Studios which has mm -hmm. been in the NFT space and the digital art and uh, wearable space for since 2017 and they've really led the charge. Um, I've known the guys who have actually been running that company for about five years now. Mm -hmm. And they've been talking about digital footwear and all this other stuff for with me for the last four years. Mm -hmm. And so to see them getting acquired by Nike was absolutely no surprise to me because they're going to go at full bore. Yeah. Where, I mean, imagine just for example, like the clone holders, right? There's 20,000 clones within that artifact their collection. That is now owned by Nike, right? Mm -hmm. Within the contract itself, we are able to... Um, make up to $1 million in secondary revenues based off of our clones likeness, whether that's us creating toys or our own cartoon or our own comic strip, whatever it might be, we have full ownership of that. And that's also owned by Nike, right? Nike has yet to announce what they're going to do um, to um, incentivize people on these NFTs, right? Because mm -hmm. NFTs are really almost, I, I try to explain to people in the easiest way, it's almost like a placeholder for you buying a stock in an early company. Okay. Right. So it's just a placeholder. Like when you see these profile pictures, they're just like they'll represent not only like your character within the metaverse, like, but then it's really just a placeholder. Cause once these NFT projects sell out, they'll finally get the financial infrastructure to build out anything that they've ever wanted. Mm -hmm. And because they have a strong community behind it of only 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000 characters or whatever, mm -hmm. um, normally there's anywhere from four to 8,000 holders in those collections. Those people then become owners of that company. Right. And then they decide how the future of that company is run, what product is run, how um, they're part of, um, you know, limited collaborations. It's almost like building value for your customers mm -hmm. for a long term span off of purchasing just one non fungible token. Right. right. So it, there's so many different aspects of doing it. There's one off pieces of art that you can sell or there's like you can really span an entire business. So with what Nike is doing, buying artifact and having them own the clones. Like, it'll be very interesting. Let's say they say, we're going to drop only for clone holders. We're going to drop an off-white version of a shoe, like an off-white Jordan 1 times right. artifact, right? And it's only available for the uh, uh, the clone holders, right? And because they know our address for our wallet, because our clone is as one of the 20,000 in the collection, right. they airdrop us a link to be able to then just buy the tangible product. Mm -hmm. as well as the actual digital product, right? So they'll say, you can buy this digital Travis Scott or this Off-White, right? Or this Union, mm -hmm. and then you can forge it, aka have it made tangibly and have it shipped to your physical address, right? And now oh, imagine yeah. what those shoes will go for on StockX when they're linked to only one of 20,000 and we know you can prove it within the blockchain, right? Wow. They're going to do that for clothing. They're going to do that for their shoes. They're going to do that mm -hmm. for everything going forward. And every company eventually will have to implement it within the next 5, 10, 15 years. It's just a matter of when. This is not <laughs> that just that's that's mind blowing. That's mind blowing. And I appreciate that because that's a great breakdown of what NFTs can be. Because like you said earlier, it's like, you know, people just think it's always oh, OK. It's a picture. I'm spending all this money on a picture. What's the point of that? I can screenshot or whatever. But to, to break it down like that to about true ownership is a really great way to describe it. Um, man, I'm, I'm just, I'm blown away by that. Um, I want to, I want to backtrack just a bit off of yeah. the digital space and just talk about what you do and what you've been doing and what custom yeah. houses do. Um, when you are working on a sneaker, right. And you're working on a Jordan one or, or Sakai, right. And you mm -hmm. customize it and it's yours. Right. And we saw this with like the uh, little Nas X, sneaker with the blood in it and all this and that. If a brand doesn't like what you do, if a brand doesn't think you representing, you know, your customization, is it representing the brand well? Is it, will the brand reach out? Do they sue? What? Do, how do you, um, you know, 
do this without um, interfering on like copyright and stuff like that? I did my due diligence, right? So I am very fortunate again to have learned the knowledge I did from the shoe surgeon sure. and how he's navigated the space, right? He's done it better than anybody else. And for me being able to work very closely with him, seeing the brands that are uh, in the conversations with him, everything like that, it was like the best learning experience I could have ever had. Right. With that being said, there's also good ways of doing business and there's bad ways of doing business, right? And I think we, we all kind of know how to navigate, right? Mm. For me, never mass produce, never. I never do any more than 25 pairs, right? Never uh, have I ever dropped more than that. And I always, always, always use authentic Nike product for bases. Okay. So um, whether it's a paint job or it's a full reconstruction, I always purchased authentic Nike stuff. I never went overseas. I never got fake soles. I never got um, cheap material and had it made in overseas factories for a hundred or you know $50 and then sold it for X amount. Right. I've always... Involved in, in really the biggest blessing is I've been able to involve the best makers, period, in the space. Right. And right. every, because at the end of the day, I'm the only customizer in the space that doesn't actually customize shoes. Okay. I don't paint. I don't sew. I don't reconstruct any of these mm -hmm. shoes. Mm -hmm. What I've done is I basically use my relationships with people and use my following yeah. um, and my relationship within the space to basically turn my designs into physical products. Okay. And so because I've been able to work with the best of the best of the best, it's really kind of given me like a backing in a way where it's like, it's a confidence. It's a, and then they've all just become like my really, really close friends. Yeah. At the end of the day, I think he was just born out of friendship and he was just yeah. like, yo, let's just work together and create this cool stuff. And then yeah. that's how it is. It's just super collaborative. We figure out a design we want to do and then we just run with it, but it's yeah. just doing it the right way. Right. It's very, you no. Know, Would you say that that's, probably one of the coolest things about not only just being in the art world, but being, you know, in the sneaker world is the relationships that you build, the the community that comes from it. Without question. It's the people that I've gotten to meet, the relationships that I've built, the friendships that I've built. And again, it's crazy. I haven't met half these makers like in actual real life. You know, we FaceTime on an hourly basis every single week and make sure I keep in contact with every single person. Like I'm on the phone probably 20, 30 hours a week just with my makers every week, just keeping in constant contact with them, growing relationships. I mean, that's the thing I cherish more than anything, because at the end of the day. I'm blessed to live my dream every single day mm -hmm. um, and just create cool stuff with my best friends. I love it, bro, man. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you for talking to me, man. I'm, I'm, listen, man. Maybe I'll get to the level where I give me something, you know, built and put together. You know, one day, one day, one day. We'll well, <laughs> no, I mean, I think, I think that's the most beautiful part about what yeah. I do too. Is I, I can take anybody's thought process of any dream yeah. of any shoe that they've ever wanted with any material yeah. and make it theirs in a one on one. Like I don't care what silhouette it is, what shoe it yeah. is, what colorway it is, what material it is. Yeah. If you want it, we can make it. We're gonna talk. We're going to talk. Thank you, brother, for joining me. I hope to have you back very, very soon, man. Anytime. Shout out to Johnny, man. Thank you for joining the show, and thank you for hipping us to the future of sneaker culture, man. I'm telling you, the future is now, man, and the art of it is alive and well. Thank you so much for joining the show, and thank you so much for tuning in, guys. Remember, follow me, MSR underscore Adam, MSR underscore Adam on all social platforms. Hit me up on TikTok at the Butler Did It Pro, and remember to follow the team. And until next week, ladies and gentlemen, mind your mental health. Be great. I'm up out of here.